Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is August 30th, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I am going to talk about the continued identified potential for a, a, an increase in the number of Atlantic cyclones over the next couple of weeks as, as indicated by, by various models that are showing that the atmospheric dynamics for the tropical Atlantic are, are switching to a, to a phase, at least for the next two to three weeks, where we're likely to see more tropical cyclone development. And, but before I, I go into that, I, I just like to talk about the origin of, of most storms for the tropical Atlantic at this time of year. And traditionally, most storms have their, their genesis as very large thunderstorms running across Africa and emerging into the tropical, tropical Atlantic near the Cape Verde Islands, and then forming into storms as they move across the very warm waters of the tropical Atlantic, feeding on convective moisture rising up off of the very warm waters of this region. As they approach the Caribbean the, and the mainland United States. Now there are various atmospheric dynamics primarily wind shear, as, as well as the positioning of, of strong high pressure and low pressure systems across the Atlantic that can either tend to suppress or tend to favor the development of these thunderstorms or clusters of thunderstorms into tropical cyclones, into tropical storms, and ultimately into hurricanes. And this satellite shot is of Africa and the tropical Atlantic for today, August 30th, showing a cluster of storms off of Africa that is an area of interest that, according to the National Hurricane Center now, has a, a high likelihood of developing into a tropical depression, as well as an area of very disturbed weather running through the Caribbean at this time, showing quite a, quite a lot of thunderstorm development that is also an area of, of potential interest for storm development, it has not yet been upgraded to an area of interest for storm development as of my latest look at the last National Hurricane Center. But there are some models indicating that this region of storms might potentially develop into a tropical cyclone. I'd like to also just provide for you a a brief look at, at thunderstorms in, in the form of an hourly rainfall measure for the African region and the Cape Verde region, showing a large cluster of thunderstorms here emerging off of Africa, which the GFS model shows developing into a, a, a circulation over the next few days with another area of, of potential development emerging by September 3rd. It's worth noting that storm chaser John Homanuk, I hope I am not completely mangling his name, has also identified some model trends for the North Atlantic in recent statements on Twitter. And I'd just like to show you the Euro model for, for identifying probability of tropical depression development over the next coming days through early next week. So we, we show a, a potential for, for, for tropical cyclone development over Florida and the eastern Gulf of Mexico a potential for tropical cyclone development in the Central Atlantic. And it's worth noting that at the end of this model run, we see two clusters, uh, uh, not just, I'm sorry, three clusters of potential development in the Central Tropical Atlantic, which may be areas to watch for, for next week and the following week in potential approaches to the Caribbean 
and the continental United States. So it's worth noting that the tropics are heating up and, and that there are systems that are being identified by models that could fire into tropical cyclones over the coming five to 10 days, three to 10 day period. And that overall the tropical Atlantic looks much more favorable I just so like to note like to note some climate change related factors. Sea surface temperatures near the US East Coast are much warmer than normal. I'm gonna go ahead and flip over to the ocean model here and look at currents and sea surface temperature anomalies. So sea surface temperatures in the northern and eastern Gulf of Mexico are warmer than normal, with much warmer than normal sea surface temperatures off the U.S. East Coast and very high sea surface temperature departures as we move directly off the Mid-Atlantic and into the Northeast. So, so any storms that do approach the U.S. or even run up through sections of the Western Caribbean will tend to have more fuel for storm developments. Atmospheric moisture related to these warmer than normal sea surface temperatures is also quite high with tropical levels of moisture lurking over the eastern and southeastern U.S. with extraordinary high levels of moisture over the Gulf of Mexico and elevated moisture levels off the U.S. east coast, in particular off the U.S. northeast, all of which would tend to provide more fuel for increasing storm intensity for storms that do approach the U.S. if atmospheric con conditions are favorable. It's worth noting that human-caused climate change does increase both sea surface temperatures and atmospheric water vapor, and that's a, a driver, a fingerprint driver for increasing potential peak storm intensities. So something to keep in mind as the Atlantic hurricane season heats up. Thank you for joining me, and I'll be chatting with you soon.